Now on BBC Radio 4, award-winning documentarian Sir Michael Scarborough Price presents Wisdom of the Aged. The Care Quality Commission last April installed recording devices in selected residential care homes. Whilst initially unaware they were being recorded, two very unique residents have subsequently agreed to the release of their candid, poignant and often spirited conversations. of schoolgirl fantasy. You enjoying that coffee, are you? Mm, it's lovely. Yes. So what have you got planned for the day, love? Oh, <sighs> not a lot, really. I was meant to be playing cards later. But John's gone off with his family as an early Father's Day thing. They can't come and see him on Sunday, so they whisked him off. Who's John? He's the one I play cards with. You know, John and Jackie. Uh, oh, Jackie, don't talk to me about Jackie. She's a... F well, you know... She's, she's a wrong un. She's not ideal, but if you're just playing cards with her, you just get on with it. And you know what we would have done back in country Australia with someone like Jackie? What's that, then? We would have put her in the back of a ute. What don't you like about her? She's a harlot. You can tell it in her eyes. She's never said anything directly to me, but I can tell. Her little eyes, her beady little eyes are judging me. Mm. Yes. I mean, she's quite a cold... She's quite a cold character, but exactly. she's not really done you wrong. Or is it just because there's nothing in her flat you like the fancy of? That's nothing enough. you got your eye on for when she drops off mortal coil. She doesn't have very much, no, you're right. It's all Ikea in there, and it's been assembled in a very slipshod way. No, no finesse. I think she cut the wrong size Allen key. That's never a good thing, is it? No, it's not. So what else have you got your eye on, then, around the place? There's a little grandfather clock, a little miniature grandfather clock that I think must be several hundred years old. Yeah, but that's in communal area, so you don't have to wait for someone to die to to have that away. But one of the carers will notice if you bring it, no, drag no. it in here, won't they? They won't, love, because I'm having a replica built in China. I sent a photo from all angles off to a Chinese website and they quoted me $57. Well, that's all well and good, but how much they charge you for delivery? No, that's including delivery. It does take six months to get here, but I can wait. And you did all that on your iPad? Yes. You're very clever, aren't you? Well, if I need to be. Mm. I could have been a lady doctor, that's what my teachers said. What's a doctor got to do with it? You could have been a con artist. You'd have been good at that. Watch, watch yourself. Well, no, it's a compliment, really. Oh, is it? Well, in, yeah. in what way is that? Well, you're very shrewd. Yes. You're very observant. I notice everything, not much get past me. You're very intelligent in your own sort of way. Yes. And you're scheming, aren't you? Oh, that's a slightly uh, pejorative term. Well, I don't know what that means. But I like to have plans, yes. So why haven't you done anything with your scheming little brain then? What do you mean, done years? anything? I've done loads of things. Well, no, you've done, you've done all the easy stuff, haven't you? Like modelling and that. I've done modelling, I've run a business, I've been what a, a coach. What business have you run? What? What business have you run? I ran a business with my husband, and there's no need to go any further into it, but I used to handle all of the finance and all of the back end. Mm. Yes, you think about that. What have you done, Dot? Let's let's turn the little interview over your way, Dot. Oh, Tell no, me was... all about your wonderful accomplishments. No, I was trying to come Time me. Magazine's Woman of the Year, 1972. Oh, look, it's not Dot. What a surprise. You can calm down. I was just trying to compliment you, but bugger it. I'm too tired for this. Well, drink the rest of your coffee. You'll have loads of energy. <sighs> Get that into you. So I'm not playing cards later, so I'm free as a bird. I thought I might spend a bit of time in the day room, do a bit of my jigsaw, 
weather's going to be nice. Might see if one of the carers can take me jigsaw out into the garden. Got one of these new, um, you know, like a felt rug that you, you wrap it up in so you can move it around. A felt rug? Yeah. Felt rug. So oh, you yeah. roll it up like a Swiss roll and you can move your jigsaw around and that means I can do it in garden. Oh, okay, that sounds lovely. You look like you're really bored now. Well, I just, I've had my vibra alarm go off on my body, so you haven't heard it, but I need to take a tablet. What have you got? What? Well, you're not meant to take anything that they're not giving you. What have you got there? Uh, this is Carver Carver. What's that? What? What's that? Carver Carver? You've not heard of Carver Carver? No. Carver Carver is, um, it's a root, and they have it. In, um, don't raise your eyebrows, a stupid bloody look on your face. It's a root, right? And the Pacific Islanders have used it for several thousand years. And uh, it just calms you down a little bit for, you know, in those situations where you might be, I don't know, in close proximity to someone who's giving you a little bit of grief. Oh. Or you're in a stressful kind of home situation. Oh, there we go. You take a little bit of Carver Carver and it calms you right down. I think there's things in it called Cavalaclones. Cavalac. Cavalac. Oh, that's Carver, nice. Cavalactones, I think they are. And they just calm me down. It's not a drug, although it is illegal. I do have to get it sent in um, from Eastern Europe. Anyway, it just, it just settles me down. After a coffee, I find myself getting a little chatty, you know, and the ideas won't stop in my head. How I'd... many coffees do you drink a day, then? Well, bef I'd probably, I'd probably have about three or four. Well, that's not too bad, is it? That's no, but they're, like they're doubles. What do you mean, a double? It's not like a gin and tonic. You don't know what a double coffee is? A double no. espresso? All right, so it's two espressos, is that what you mean? Yes, so equivalent of six to eight. Hmm. It's a lot. And I only weigh, as you'll recall, a very, very three small stone. amount. What? Three stone. Don't be ridiculous. I haven't been three stone since I was 19. Since I was modelling. So you like to remind me? Yes. Those were the days. When you'd walk past a man and you'd see a look in his eye and you'd pretend you didn't notice and then you'd kind of flick your hair and tap your heels or just kind of turn side on so that what little boobs that I had would show up. You'd kind of move your shoulder like that. Is that what you did the other day in the canteen? What do you mean? Well, I noticed your body language were a bit different from normal. And uh, you were sort of posing as you waited for your croquettes, and Silvio was giving the old glad eye. Oh yes, he was. He was looking at me over the top of his coffee. Men have got this tactic, where they, what they'll do is they'll they'll see someone they're attracted to, and they'll move their body in that general direction, and they'll pretend to see something beyond her that they're intensely interested in, and they'll they'll kind of. Oh, that's interesting beyond there, but what their eyes are really doing is they're taking a good, hard look at you, and they use it later. Well, that's that... probably what Silvio was doing. He's been sending me letters. What do you mean? He's been writing to me. So you're aware of it, then? Oh, it's yes. not just my imagination and your... Oh, so what's going on? I'm quite surprised that you picked up on that dot, because normally I would say you're one of the most oblivious of characters. Well, I'm surprised you even saw him, knowing what your eyesight's like. I felt him. Oh, I bet you did. Yes. He He's got a very powerful um, presence. And there's also the old factory. I did smell him, because he uses uh, Old Spice. Not the old Old Spice, the new Old Spice, with the black man on the horse. I'm on a boat. You know, did you see that? It went viral a few years ago. Oh, is this something you've seen on your iPad? Yes, yes, that's right. It's on. I, I go into the iPad. I like watching uh, funny ads. And I also like watching uh, Nürburgring crashes. Have you seen those? No. Oh, it's wonderful. The Nürburgring is a racetrack. It's called the Green Hell uh, over in Germany. 
and they have compilations where people go on it because it's, it's an open road. You can just go through it and you pay a toll. You drive through it. It's a racetrack. It's very narrow. It goes on for eight miles. And people crash on it all the time because they overestimate their own driving ability. And are they going to put that on Top Gear at some point? They've done it on Top Gear, yes. That's where they found Sabina Schmidt, who runs the Ring Taxi. And is that is that the new Top Gear or the old one? Old one. All oh, right. That was, you know, back when it was Jeremy and James and Richard. You're sweating, love. You're finding the proximity a little bit sexually arousing, are you? No, I don't sweat from my armpits when I'm sexually aroused. Where do you sweat from? Other places. Really? My southern creases. Thanks for asking. That's anyway. interesting. I think I've, I've caught a whiff of those when you've moved around in bed in the covers. Well, that's not very nice, no, Southern is it? creases. I think baby powder is probably the best idea for those creases because... Is that why you were going at me with a towel the other day? And I said, what are you doing? And yes. you put it behind your back and you pretended you didn't know what I was talking about. I you're trying to throw it at me. Shall we move on? Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. Yes. Let's, let's talk about you. Well, I was going to ask you whether you thought... Well, whether you knew anything about the um, the rationing that's going on around here. Well, no, I don't know anything about that, love. What are you talking about? Well, I think you might, because you know most things that go on over here, even though you don't ever leave, you seem to have your finger on pulse about things. And the cantina got even worse with what they're giving you. And it makes me makes me cranky when I don't get fed enough, and you know that. And there's only so much they'll let you keep in here, because I do a sweep every week of my biscuits and that. And I can't go to shops and just buy what I like, because I'm always under time pressure, because of the shuttle and the carers don't let you bring oh, bags enough of food. about your, f your food, for God's sake, woman. Do you want to do something about it? Well, yeah, that's why I'm asking you. I'm asking you what's going on. All right, well, how about this for an idea? Instead of asking me what's going on, why don't we reverse that situation? I don't think you've watched much Dr Phil, have you? Who's that? Exactly. So let's take a bit of personal responsibility for your food intake, for your energy. Well, right? that's why I'm asking you. I'm trying to do oh, something about it. What's going on around here? How about this? How about this? What can I do to fix this? What can I do? That's a better question. Say well, it again. I try to buy more food when I'm in town and take it off me. All right. You know that little key that hangs up in the canteen on, on the right-hand side as you walk past with the trays? Yeah. You do? I think so, yeah. Right. So that key between 11 o'clock and 12.30 hangs there, right? Because all the staff are inside. Now, take that key... Run it into town on your little shuttle, get a key cut, and you will have access to that kitchen 24-7. Well, I thought it was for windows. You thought the key was for the windows? Yeah. Christ. All right, so take the key. It's, it's the little blue key, all right? There's a blue, a red, a green, and a black key on that... Bunch. Bunch. On the bunch. On the bunch, yes... There's no double O in it, you know that, don't you? On the bunch, no. It's not a double O. It's a bunch, B-U-N-C-H. Well, I don't tell you how to spell it. I just say it the way I say it. You say things how you say things. How long has it been since you've lived in the North? Well, why does that matter? It's my identity. Where, how long oh, has it been your... since you lived in where it, wherever you're bloody from? So are you saying a baby doesn't have an identity? Until it's got a bloody northern accent, it doesn't have an identity. Is that the way things work in your mind? No, but I'm talking about the canteen, and you're talking about how you spell bunch. I'm talking about being understood by those around you. We live in the southwest, love. Well, everyone understands me, so that's fine. You think they understand you, but often, in your wake, there's a trail of miscommunications that I have to fix up. Somebody says, oh... You know, Dot said this to me before and I didn't understand a word of it, but I just kept nodding and smiling at her. Oh, well, that's very nice of you, isn't it? At least it gives you something to do. What are those you're taking? My tablets. Tablets for what, love? 
I've told you this. You ask me every time. Are they for your belt? Yeah. You still haven't answered my question. What question now? How do you spell bunch? No. My question is, remains and always has been, hard or soft? Come on, we're living together now. Well, then you should know, shouldn't you? The bathroom's only over there. So my guess would be, although you turn the tap on in the sink when you have a really good go, don't you, to disguise it, my guess is from the grunts and groans, it's hard. Would I be right? Care to make it interesting? Anyway, what about these letters? Oh, yes, he's been sending me letters telling me how much he fancies me and, you know, since his wife died, he hasn't had much to go on and... You know, when did she die? Uh, I think it was... I'm not really sure. He moved in here about a year ago, so I think she died a couple of months before that. He's expressed the wish in the letters um, of some some light... You know... Washing, laundry... No. Gardening? No. I think you know what I mean. Petting? Yes. Blimey. And he says he misses the touch of a woman. And he's sent you letters. Yes, for that. yes. What does that supposed to mean? I could see that look on your face. He sent you that. You think you're more of a woman than me, do you? Well, I know I am. Oh, but... care to make it interesting? What do you mean? We will go around and we'll survey 20 men in this facility and we will ask them. If push came to shove, Dot or Elspeth? All right. And we'll see how... Yes, we'll see, won't we? Yeah, well, that'd be interesting, I think. Yes. I think you underestimate the, the power of the bigger lady, to be honest. You keep going on about your skinny little frame and how attractive you are. I think you might be surprised at the results, to be all honest right. with you. OK, all right. Well, what about a grand? Well, you know I don't have that kind of money. You're always saying... Let's do a wager on this or that. Oh, what, you know, all that sort of thing. I don't have a grand, do I? All right, well, how about this? How about this for an idea? If I win, you have to do everything I say for two weeks. If you win, you get to sleep on the Persian rug. I don't want to sleep on the Persian rug. I've already told you that. What about if I put some underlay under it? I think you're being ridiculous. I think if I win, we get to get a bunk bed in here. Where from? Well, you'll think of something, won't you? Mm. All right, I source it then. We get a bunk bed, but I source it. Well, yeah, but you've I'll got have some to, scheme, you don't, haven't you? You don't have any access to any kind of online facility. Well, no, that's fine, but the fact that you're offering makes me nervous because you're obviously going to buy, like, a doll's house size one no, or something No, you'll get like something that. that you deserve. Yeah, well, you'll have to sleep in it as well. No, I'll be fine on my, my mattress here, thank you very much. We can't fit in both, can we? No, that's quite clear. I've been lying on the edge, perilously bloody close to death, since you've taken up most of the room on the bed. Maybe I should go and see if there's a caravan free. That might not be the worst idea I've ever heard. All right, well, I'll let you know what I find out. All right, please do. And I look forward to the results of our sexual survey.